Hello, I'm Hilary. This is session 20 of our journey through the New Testament. And we have our Messiah baby. He's circumcised and he's named as the angel had instructed. His name is Jesus. So we're going to follow the family as they are going into the temple with their sacrifice. And we are going to read our passage this time in the Bible for everyone. When the time came for them to be purified according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him before the Lord. That's what the law of the Lord says. Every firstborn male shall be called holy to the Lord. They also came to offer sacrifice according to what it says in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now let's pause there for a moment because I think the old covenant law often does cause us to pause. Here's the law we are dealing with in Leviticus 12. When the days of her purification are complete, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring to the priest, at the doorway of the tent of meeting, a one-year-old lamb for a burnt offering, or a young pigeon, or a turtle dove for a sin offering. Then he shall offer it before the Lord, and make atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the flow of her blood. This is the law for her who bears a child, whether male or female. But if she cannot afford a lamb, then she shall take two turtle doves or two young pigeons, the one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for her, and she will be clean. So unclean isn't just about going the wrong way. Having a period or a baby is not, is not wrong. It has to be about something else. I was reasonably happy to live in the mystery of that for a long time until I studied the Old Testament and I was determined not to shuffle the tricky bits under the carpet. And when I hit those bits, the ones that jarred with me, I understood that God was stirring me up to actually just talk to him about it and kind of wrestle them out. In fact, that process of connecting with him and waiting and just kind of letting the mystery mull and hang over my head while I simply just tried to love and listen, that's what unlocked the mysteries for me. When it came to these mysterious laws about uncleanliness, this simple thing is what I heard him say to me. Originally, you were made to live in my holy presence. You were eternal with no blemish or imperfection. And I remembered that we are made in his image. We were made to reflect him in every way, his eternity, his perfect wholeness. So to come back to that measure of being in his presence, being holy, they would have had to have gone back in time to a time when they, when we were eternal and there was no death, there was no illness. If there was eternity, was there even reproduction? Remember, this is, subject is about childbirth, etc. So I'm just mulling on that. Now, these guys have got Jesus' birth, but they don't have his death yet. They don't have his sacrifice that is going to defeat death. And we can reflect God's eternal nature because of what he has done, but they could not. So what we saw was that God so much wants to be with his people, that being together in his presence, that he sets up this system of holiness that enables them. He's so merciful that he intricately designs a system, a way for them to come, to connect, to be cleaned up spiritually, be part of his presence and be holy. So for instance, God is eternal, we were eternal. In order for them to be in his presence, his very presence, does the evidence of death need to be removed? Because there's a lot of laws around um, handling death. Okay, loads to ponder on. Simeon is someone who understood this system. This description of him as devout speaks of taking hold of something doing something well, carefully and surely, reverencing God. We are in verse 25 now. Now there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout, waiting for God to comfort Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. He had been told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Led by the Spirit, he came to the temple. As Jesus' parents brought him in, 
to do for him what the law's regulations required. He took the baby in his arms and blessed God with these words. Now, master, you are dismissing your servant in peace, just as you said. These eyes of mine have seen your salvation, which you made ready in the presence of all peoples, light for revelation to the nations and glory for your people, Israel. So this is uh, not only more evidence that God had indeed been speaking to people for the last 400 years, but it reveals layers of it. I noted how Luke records this information. It's very matter of fact, not just in its kind of writing style, but the culture in which he was writing too. And it just doesn't seem that it's an extraordinary event for someone who loves God to be hearing Holy Spirit. And Simeon doesn't strike me as someone who is waiting with some kind of vague understanding of his people needing comfort. He would have known all of these prophecies, but you get this sense that Simeon knew something more, something of the who and the how this salvation was going to come. Many were looking for that warrior, uh, another kind of King David, perhaps. But Simeon is just looking for the consolation of Israel. It's a word that speaks of God drawing his people in, of an exhortation, an encouragement, a comfort, so profound that the people would be changed by it. He understood that this person wouldn't just bring comfort, but he would be comfort. He would be complete and eternal comfort. His words wouldn't just advise or entreat, but they would actually be life to those who believed in him. He has not just waited. It seems that he has been in preparation so that he is not going to miss it. Isaiah saw a time people would say, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord of whom we have waited. His eyes see this salvation, which God has made ready in the presence of all peoples, light for revelation to the nations and glory for your people Israel. Just as the psalmist saw, the Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations in Psalm 98. This is one of those times we see the New Testament complete the Old Simeon also understood that this consolation was also for the Gentiles, a light revealing the true God. Isaiah spoke of it when he spoke of a coming light, the word nations here meaning other nations or Gentiles. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness the peoples, but the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. We may think that everyone accepted that this light was also for the Gentiles, but many struggled with the concept, even in the early church, Paul having to go over it again and again. Therefore let it be known to you that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will also listen. And we are indeed listening, God. Simeon has reminded us of the rewards of a life lived in the Spirit, committed to love God, and to get that inside information. As Jesus puts it, I do not call you servants that I would own anymore, because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I call you friends. And I am going to leave it there and see you next time.